It's another Ugly Duckling Challenge, hosted by Corey at Desert DIY. You want to check out her channel, as well as the entire playlist of furniture flippers and their ugly ducklings. I'm super excited to see all of the videos in this playlist. They're all going to be up on Sunday the 30th. Here's my ugly duckling in the beginning. This is an old headboard. I think it's kind of a mid-century modern 60s, 70s piece. And it's missing one of the sliding doors. And the finish on it is pretty rough. So I'm going to do a little transformation on it. What I'm not exactly saying yet. Maybe you can guess along the way. But check this front panel area. Just want you to note that so that um, you'll understand when I remove it. At this point, I'm not sure if that piece is glued in or just screwed in with these little blocks. So I start the process of removing them and I have it turned on its side. So I keep working with it and it's coming loose so it wasn't glued in it was just screwed in with all those different blocks so that was an easy removal so after that is gone here's what we're left with these big tall sides um, that would just kind of make it unbalanced by themselves so i'm going to remove those any guesses where we're going with this yet i'm just using my jigsaw and cutting off those sides right at the bottom of the uh, headboard piece or i'll call it the cabinet part of the headboard I went a little offline there, so no fear. We'll go back in and straighten it up. So there's the bed slats. So I'm playing around with a configuration and trying to make some legs. Now, here's something that inspired me. Melanie at Colored Caboose Creations did a video in which she took the legs from a mid-century modern chair for a table that she was doing. So that really inspired me. So I am not using legs from a chair. And by this time you figured out that I'm making a console table perhaps, but I want to use those bed slats. So check out that video. Uh, I'll put the link in the description box uh, from Melanie at Colored Caboose Creations. So in this video, I'm doing a few firsts. <laughs> I'm trying a few things. So right now I'm just playing around with different lengths and angles to see what I want to do. Um, but I'm trying my first try at a Craig jig, a pocket hole drill. Um, so, so far I haven't had a, a good go at it, but I'm going to keep working at it. And now I am trying out a carbide scraper. I see lots of my furniture flipping friends using these, and it looks so satisfying to scrape all of that, um, varnish off. And, but there is a learning curve to it. I'm definitely not quite adept at using it yet and there's a lot of scraping to be done even on this small piece so I'm kind of going back to the sander just because I need um, I'm kind of crunched for time right now so this piece this part is going to be painted anyway so I'm not really worried about it being inconsistent um, as long as we get it smooth, I'll show you how we fix that finish. So I clean it with a TSP solution called White Lightning uh, from Dixie Bell. I keep it mixed in a sprayer bottle. 
and then you just want to make sure that you rinse it afterwards i use the same mister bottle that i use when i'm blending paint on my pieces but just make sure that you rinse it so that your paint has good adhesion Since you'll see the bottom of this, potentially, I'm going to fill in those little holes that were left from those screws. So I'm using um, mud, Dixie mud in the white color. And next I'm using Boss, also from Dixie Bell. And this is a stain blocking primer. The reason I'm doing that is because with my different sanding and scraping efforts, even though I have it smooth, I have exposed some of the raw wood and not being 100% sure what the species of wood is, I want to make sure it's not a bleeder because I'm going to be painting this white. So even though I'm going to be using silk, which is an all-in-one paint, meaning it has a primer in it as well as a sealer, I'm not going to take any chances and have any tannins bleed through making my paint appear yellowy or brownish. So I'm going to go ahead and coat everything with a coat of Boss. So here's the part where I am using the Craig jig for the first time. So what we're not watching is my clamp. <laughs> I'm making do, but um, my attempts. So I had already positioned the, the jig. This is in by no means a an educational piece on how to use a Craig jig because it was my first attempt. I watched some videos, I tried it, and trust me, I'm watching more videos because with this flat um, piece, I have to actually back that jig up a little bit so that it goes in and doesn't pierce through the other piece because I found, as you'll see, <laughs> that it certainly didn't bond the two pieces together and I'm backing that screw out because it just hit the one piece. So, you know... Anything that you do that's new is trial and error, but I'm just so glad that I'm at least over the first initial fear of using this tool. So I'm ready to go back at it, and uh, you know what they say, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. So I'm going to try, try again. And also something um, that's an old saying, practice makes perfect. Um, I heard someone say the other day, I wish I could remember who it was, practice doesn't make perfect, it makes you better. So uh, just remember that um, nothing's perfect and just practice makes you better and better. So that one stayed together, but you could see the screw. So hence my pondering. Like I said, I'll get it right. But meanwhile, I'm going to start painting. So here you can see the difference between uh, my layer of boss in white and a coat of white cap, which is the color I'm using in the silk all-in-one mineral paint. So I'm sure I'm going to use a couple of coats of that because I really wanted to have a nice white finish.
So here's the sliding door that remained on the piece. So I'm using it as a pattern and I cut out another piece out of plywood and not having a router <laughs> that's on my to-do list or to on my wish list rather. Um, I'm using a variety of tools, a hammer, an exacto knife, <laughs> a putty knife, and a screwdriver and just kind of prying away um, to get that um, lip, um, I guess you could say, on there so it'll slide on the track. And I actually had success in doing this. Um, and then I chipped a little off the front because it is plywood that I used. So I used the Dixie Mud then to, um, to patch that. Using the top door as a template, I start a hole and then finish drilling that hole in the um, other door so that they match up. I'm sanding it and I'm going to start using the boss again because I'm painting on raw wood um, and also on the other piece just in case we have any bleed through. So I use the boss again before I give it more coats of the white cap color so that everything matches. The original door had a little silver knob and so I had to find a couple knobs that would work. So I found these little yellow knobs and that's a great color to put underneath. I'm using gemstone mousse in golden gem from Dixie Bell to make my knobs um, nice and gold to match the legs that I put on this piece. So remember that panel that I took off the front? This is the underside of it. It's going to be the bottom shelf of the table. And I'm attaching the legs that I bought from Amazon. And uh, I think they're really pretty. So um, I'll put a link in the description box for them. Now I'm going to be totally honest with you. The plans that I had um, for putting those legs together out of the bed slats were not coming together as I had hoped. And then suddenly I remembered that I had a pair of wooden crutches in the basement. So I got them and I started fooling around with them. Now I will tell you that I really didn't film all of this just because I wasn't sure what I was doing. But I did cut off um, that the ends of them and I used L brackets to attach the crutches to the side of the, um, the bottom shelf. So I also cut off the top portion um, as well. 
As I said, I didn't film everything, but I did use some of the bed slats. So remember what we started with, the headboard, some bed rails, and a pair of crutches. And what did we end up with? This console table. I'm rather pleased with the results. I hope you enjoy this video. Don't forget to watch the entire playlist. I'll have the link in my description box. Thank you so much for watching today. If you like this video, how about giving it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, you'll want to do that so you don't miss anything. Visit us at LaVintageDecor.company and on Instagram we're LaVintageDecor and on Facebook we're LaVintageDecor Altoona. Stay well.